October 23rd, the Feast of the Most Holy Redeemer. Today is the Feast of the Most Holy Redeemer, and it is celebrated in certain parts of the world. This feast is found only in the special calendar of some dioceses and religious orders, and is celebrated with a proper Mass and office, either on the third Sunday of July or on October 23rd. In Venice, Italy, this feast has been observed for more than three centuries. There, in the year 1576, a plague broke out, which in a few days carried away thousands of victims. To avert this scourge, the Senate vowed to erect a splendid temple to the Redeemer of mankind and therein to offer each year a public and solemn service of thanksgiving. Scarcely had the plague ceased when they began to fulfill their vow. The cornerstone was laid on the 3rd of May in the year 1577, and the church was finally consecrated in the year 1592. By concession of Pope Benedict XIV in the year 1749, the Congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer, or Redemptionists, solemnized this feast as a double of the first class with an octave on the third Sunday of July. The same congregation also keeps the feast as a greater double on the 23rd of October. Also in Rome, Pope Pius VIII introduced the feast and by a decree of May 1830, the Sacred Congregation of Rites assigned it to October 23rd. A redeemer is one who pays the debt of another to deliver him from an unfortunate situation from which he finds himself unable to be liberated without aid. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the redeemer of all mankind. He redeemed us from the mystery of original sin and man's enslavement to the influence of demons. Our Lord has reestablished man in a state more enviable than that of our first father, Adam, who, until his sin, was the possessor of remarkable gifts and immortality. With Job, we can say, I know that my Redeemer liveth, for we have known Christ and his doctrine, and we possess him in his sacrament of love. The evils from which he has delivered us are both of the present life and of the future life, if indeed we cooperate with his plan for our salvation. The evils of the present life are those which affect the body, sickness, and death, and those which affect the soul. Of these latter, the more important, first of all, is ignorance. Before Christ came, this ignorance was so great, the darkness so thick, that men had reached to a point of no longer knowing what it was most important for them to know, their origin, their nature, and their future destinies. The second evil of the soul is concupiscence, that crowd of bad inclinations which makes us tend toward evil and often carry us into it. Thirdly, we have to bear a hereditary burden of sin, first original sin in which we are all conceived, then actual sins into which all men are led to a greater or lesser degree. But Jesus has delivered his faithful Christians and all who so desire. He has delivered from ignorance by revealing to us the truth that we must believe to be saved and by teaching us through his holy church the continuing work of redemption. He has delivered us from concupiscence by actual graces, which, if they do not remove all bad inclinations, at least give us the strength to overcome them and tame them. And God can well say to us, as he once said to St. Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee, and there is no sin for which Jesus has not earned our pardon if we ask for it. Do not the sacraments of baptism and penance have the power to take away every sin, even if they should be as numerous as the hairs of our head and redder than scarlet? We are not delivered from the exterior power of sin's chastisements affecting the body, but Jesus has made it possible to convert them into blessings. For he has won for us the strength to bear them with patience and sanctify them by submission to the holy will of God, and thereby to make of them a very great source of merits. Death itself will not dominate us forever. After having felt us, it will be victim in its turn. For Christ will raise us up some day, as he raised himself up, and then we will die no more. Let us say in our hearts an unending thank you to our Redeemer.